This is a screencast I gave in July 2014 at ORAS in Lisbon. And I'm going to talk about the effect that selfish behavior can have on um, healthcare systems. And in particular, a measure of this selfish behavior that is called price of anarchy. So this is a very well-known game. It's called the prisoner's dilemma. And the top left cell represents two prisoners getting caught, being separated, and keeping quiet. Uh, not confessing um, to each other's crime. And so they both go to prison for two years. However, if the player who controls the row that we're in accepts the deal from the cops, we move to the top right cell, and now the row player will go to prison for five years and the column player will go free. However, if both players accept the deal, they'll both go to prison for four years. And so we have a situation where if everyone acts optimally, in other words, keeps quiet from the prisoner's point of view, then they both go to prison for two years. But if they act completely rationally, then this situation gets, from their point of view, twice as bad. And the idea of twice as bad, this number two, is what we're going to talk about today, and is indeed the price of anarchy for the prisoner's dilemma. And here is a... Um, graph of the price of anarchy uh, for a paper that I've got published with uh, Professor Harper. And here we were looking at the effect of individuals choosing which queue they join. And we applied this to an actual healthcare system in Wales. And we saw that, yep, if we let people choose, then this price of anarchy would go up as lambda, which is along the x-axis, as uh, the horizontal axis, as lambda increases, the price of anarchy goes up and then it starts going uh, down. And basically what's happening here, this price of anarchy is a comparison of the worst case Nash equilibria to um, the best case scenario. So what we have is when we have very low demand on the system, um, when demand's around five or less, the selfish actions don't make a difference. So the optimal behavior and the, and the, and the selfish behavior doesn't really make a difference. And similarly, when we go to a very high demand, the system is so congested that it doesn't make a difference once again. Basically, the system is so bad that if you're acting selfishly, it doesn't make a difference. What we have is in the middle there, this, this um, situation where, yeah, around a lambda equals 10, then that's where we're going to get a really high price of anarchy. So that's the, this window of potential for selfish actions to, to, to cause quite a mess. But that was looking at the users. What about the controllers of the system? What about the hospital managers? And um, there has been some work on that. In particular, there's this very good paper uh, by Dion Gervich where they co consider ambulance diversions. They look at emer accident emergency systems and um, they see what happens to the underlying market chain when uh, the ambulances act selfishly and put themselves in what's called diversion, basically divert the ambulances to a, uh, another accident emergency center when they're getting a bit busy. So that's a really nice paper. It doesn't in, in particular consider the price of anarchy, but it looks at this equilibrium behavior. At Cardiff, there's a lot of work that gets done on the modeling of critical care units, so not accident emergency, but kind of the, the higher end where, where people are extremely ill and need one-to-one -one care uh, from nurses. And... Um, this is the work of Isabella Comando, who's a PhD student that I helped supervise. And we were trying to fit standard queuing models uh, to the data, and it was just not working. It just would not um, fit until we applied a state-dependent queuing model. In other words, where the arrival rates on the system depended on the state of the system. So simply, if the system was very busy, less people were coming in. And there, straight away, we got a pretty good fit. Uh, if you look at the, the blue and the red, they, they match up quite well. So in other words, mathematically, what this was saying was that there seems to be a behavioral element where perhaps the managers were, um, were having slightly less uh, people come in to the, to the system when they got busy. And this, is, uh, this led to a, a publication with some hospital managers, um, and we mentioned this, and, and they said, well, yes, this... This obviously is not something that happens consciously, but perhaps is an indirect effect. 
And so this is what we're going to talk about today. And it's the idea of, okay, if we have two critical care units and we, and we allow them to perhaps, when they get to a certain point, send their patients to the other hospital, and we're going to call one RG and the other one H, and H um, what happens? And, and, and that's, the, that's the basic idea. And so what we have is we have this system, and this is basically our game, where NH and RG are being asked to place a line um, on um, a, a, a threshold at which they, they allow less patients. So, for example, um, an H just index the hospital, right? So lambda NHA um, would be more than lambda NHC, okay? That would be the idea, that lambda NHC you'd get a little bit less, but perhaps... Lambda RGC would be a bit higher uh, because they're getting the demand from NH. Um, sorry, I went uh, a couple of slides ahead there. This is the markup chain. I do not expect you to be able to, to look at any of that. But basically, what these arrows show are transitions between different states that, um, that form up our, our markup chain. And if I just zoom in on the point where the red lines intersect, this is the point where those two thresholds are in place. And we, we, we simply see the, that we get services. Um, uh, so those are the mu's, they're the rates at which a particular um, CCU serves its, its, uh, its patients. And uh, so one over mu and H, one over mu RG would correspond to the length of stay in the particular uh, CCU. And, and similarly, uh, the lambdas, they, they, they just are a, are a direct consequence of, of, our, of our rates. And so what we have is uh, here, if we look at this, the, the first horizontal pair of histograms, this is just looking at our market chains. If the thresholds are at 6 and 12, in the particular case where once you go past the threshold, the CCU is effectively closed. It does not allow anyone to, to come in. Um, then we see for NH that if it stops at 6, that we have the probability distribution of the states going up until 6, and then 7 and 8 will never happen. And similarly for RG, if it's at 12, we have something quite similar. But then if NH all of a sudden said, well, I know what RG is doing. I'm going to move my threshold to 1. Straight away, obviously, we just have the occupancy of, uh, of sometimes being at 0, sometimes being at 1 for NH. But we also see that RG's demand um, goes up. Okay, so this is the kind of thing we're looking at. And this diagram, these two, these two plots are just there to show you that our markup chains uh, act sensibly. So to put it in a game theoretical uh, setting, what we must have is we must have both hospitals must have a goal. And in general, what happens is you hear hospital managers um, referring basically to a paper that was written in the 80s where they said, well, perhaps aiming for something like 80% occupancy instead of 100% occupancy isn't a bad idea. And that 80% has sadly stuck pretty hard. And, and that's the target that most hospitals aim to aim for without necessarily being right for, for different Specialties for different circumstances, maybe more than 80, maybe less than 80 would be right. So that target, so the T is what we're going to be looking at in this work. And so we're saying, all right, every hospital is trying to minimize that distance from T. So we're trying to get as close to T as possible. Um, and this, the constraints there are just the logical ones, that the, the basically that the strategies, the, the thresholds make sense. Once we've done that, we can... Um, basically solve our market chains, get our probability distributions for our market chains, get the utilization, and put these all into two matrices. And this is exactly like the prisoner's dilemma in, in that second slide. And we can solve this using a, a variety of algorithms, such as a, a linear complementary program or a reverse search algorithm. And we can do all that, and that's great. And, and, and indeed, that's how, when we first did this work, we did it. But after a little while of looking at this, we realized that there was... Um, some structure to our problem, and that we could actually find a nicer algorithm for this particular problem to uh, to find the equilibrium. And at least this first prop, this first theorem, which is relatively straightforward, it basically says if your best response functions um, are sensible. In other words, that if one hospital um, closes its doors earlier then your best response to that is to also close it earlier, which makes sense and if you think about it for a little bit. Then there will be a Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. So we won't have to worry about mixed strategies. And that's a very nice uh, little theorem. It's extremely simple to prove. You basically say, well, the conditions we put on our function are equivalent to, to two lines going up. And so if we plotted those on the same graph, those lines would intersect. And that line of intersection is a Nash equilibrium, a pure strategy. 
But then we, we have a, a more powerful lemma because these best response functions, they all involve solving these markup chains and, and it's, uh, they're quite difficult to, to know anything about. But this, this lemma allows us to, um, to do things uh, that are a bit more useful. And so basically this lemma says, okay, if our lambda rates make sense, so past one threshold, my demand goes down, your demand goes up and, and vice versa, then the uh, best response functions are non-decreasing, which is the condition we wanted to be able to apply the theorem. Um, so the, the proof of that can be summarized in this in this diagram. We see those those utilization values go down for different values of the threshold, and basically, as you're going down, your distance from the target will um, decrease and then increase. At which point, you'll only go to the next one up. You'll never um, you'll never decrease. So, so that's the, the idea. And all of this relies on the very simple idea that in a queuing system, your utilization goes up if you, you send more people to it. So it's, uh, it's relatively straightforward. And so then we, these are some plots. So if our target is 0.8 using some of the data, we see that um, the Nash equilibrium, so the point at which these lines intersect, is uh, at, at at its fullest, which is kind of what we want. We don't want hospitals to, to necessarily slow down the, the patients they take in. But if we reduce that target to like 0.6, then we've got a Nash equilibrium at, at 6 and 11. So in other words, it wasted capacity as far as getting patients through a concern, which again, is not necessarily what we're aiming to do. But from this point of view, this is the, the problem we have to consider. So once we've uh, looked at that, an immediate question could be, well, what value of t makes sense? So going back to this paper that was written in uh, in the eighties, where they said maybe eighty, and they, I'm not I'm not saying all oh, this paper was from doing anything wrong. It's perhaps the interpretation of it. Here's just another way where we're saying, okay, these targets are are all well and good when you're considering one unit uh, in isolation, but these things do interact. So how does one um, take care of the, of the ensuring that we have good incentives? And that comes back to the price of anarchy. So we're gonna choose the value of social good, which is very one-dimensional in this work, and this work is very theoretical, um, but the value of, the, of social good is simply how many patients are going through our system. So we want a lot of patients to go through our system. Um, and what we have is we're just going to take the ratio of uh, T tilde, which will be the Nash throughput, and in particular the worst Nash throughput, but we've shown that those functions will only have one pure Nash, so it doesn't need to worry about that too much. Um, and we're we're dividing the optimal throughput by that Nash throughput. So that value of POA is, is, is again, um, the price of anarchy is how bad does selfish behavior make the system? It's comparing selfish behavior when people are allowed to do what they want, trying to do what's best, acting completely rationally, as opposed to some central control. And, and this is uh, what the price of anarchy looks like. So X on the bottom axis is simply a value of scaling the actual demand we had for our, from, from the data. And, and t is the value of target. So first of all, you see if you pick any particular t, that as x increases, the demand goes up and then comes down. So that's very similar to that first graph I, I, I put up looking at patients choosing between facilities as opposed to controllers. And now what we also see is that as t increases, uh, at some point we get a, um, a minimum POA. So what could be the lowest value of T that ensures this? Because we want a low value of T because we don't want to reject patients um, and we don't want to run a too high utilization. What is the lowest value of T that gives us, um, that aligns the selfish interests of the critical care units with the global interests of the population, which in our case and in our very one dimensional case is patient throughput. And um, the lowest value of T when X is zero and X is just some scaling value of the actual demand was in fact 72. Um, so uh, a target of 72% utilization is what would align to CCUs. So 80 is perhaps a bit higher than it needs to be, um, but 72 would do it based on this analysis. So to conclude uh, this presentation, um, we developed a strategic form game representation of CCU interaction under underpinned by um, a Markov chain analysis of uh, the queuing process that happens, prove the structural properties of the equilibrium behavior, which allows us to very efficiently calculate Nash equilibrium, 
and it identifies potential justified approach to obtaining uh, incentives and policies. And this is currently being submitted submitted to Omega. Um, so um, hopefully we'll get a couple of positive reviews soon. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch uh, with myself or either of my calls.